is better than getting your book perfect. <laughs> so really, what, what we want to chat about is what does it take to go from the end of your first draft to this? Mm. This is the bit that we all want. Okay, so this is ours. This is the first time we are holding it yeah. together. Absolutely. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter how many books you have written. And Kate, this is your fifth book, my eighth book, plus a few others that I've written for other people. But it doesn't matter because when we opened that box, a number of things happened. The first was, oh my God, we look like we've been on a sunbed for the last eight months. I know. Literally, I walked through Sarah's door and I was like, we look like a bit dragonish it's too dark it's not the color of the proof mm. and that's the thing there's all these complicated mm. parts that have to slot in and dovetail so we came mm. up with something yesterday that was done is better than perfect mm. because if you want it to be perfect you're going to wait for 10 years mm. you're going to wait for 20 years you're going to wait for 30 mm. years so but it's it's hard because the ego gets involved the mm. the kind of oh my goodness what have we done what have we put out there this is our brand so why don't we go backwards a bit to mm. where did we start two years ago yeah so let's just we wanted to just explain to you what it, you know because you often you're sitting in the journey of writing some of you are further down the line you submitting so we wanted to just give you a little bit of a bigger picture because writing is one step on the journey of being an author and there are many more steps mm -hmm. so we just want to reinforce that that the stage you at whether you are writing that mantra needs to hold true done is better than perfect so when we had done we started our book and we did a big show but we had written it in four days five, five days, days five right. days yeah right that was a year ago that was last february i came to sarah's home mm. and that's what we did this is now a year later a year and we later have got it in our hands and i think the process was very interesting for us because we finished it off what we thought was finished right <clears throat> yes we did our very best version of our book and then we sent it to editors so often people look at us and they think, well, we're professional. We know what we're doing. Surely Sarah edits. Surely I proofread. No, because one of the problems is you always need fresh eyes. You always mm. need someone else because there's only so many times. It's almost like every time you read your own manuscript or you go in and edit, it's like your, your iris gets smaller and smaller because it's almost like you cannot see the words mm. anymore. You can't look at them with fresh eyes. So we sent it off to the editor. Then we got back our first edit. Our first edit and lots of changes and suggestions. But we weren't overwhelmed we with weren't it. overwhelmed with mm. our book mm. we looked at it and we thought we can do a little bit better yes and mm. i was like sarah we're going into that loop that we tell writers not to go into because mm. you can go back in many times but we did some structural reworking like we mm. we stood back and we almost put it at the other side of the table and we were mm. like okay we can do this better we're not feeding the information in the right way right. to the reader and the editor hadn't also quite helped us yet do that mm. so we did another re-edit but yeah. i was overseas sarah was here so we're doing that on dropbox and saving copies so that's a little bit of a complication that we had to navigate and i will say that that last edit was really when it all clicked because we had given it to somebody else we could step back it was more of a product in our hands mm -hmm. and we were thinking of the reader we were saying but how would they navigate this but is this information mm -hmm. in the right place mm -hmm. we took some things out took a lot out because that's also interesting because our book is actually called write a book in a hundred days and you'll recognize the stop mucking about but what we did as some bonus was we added in we got a contributor tessa graham who is a brand expert mm. she contributed and then we added in some bonus chapters about what happens when you have finished the first draft mm. and how do you take it all the way to get to publishers so those were bonus chapters so what we did was we decided to reduce the the gravitas of those because mm. the emphasis of the book was to write plan mm. and write your book in 100 days so we kind of rejigged the emphasis so mm. we kept the emphasis then on part one and two mm. and then gave Tessa the brand and reduced number four because it felt better right and then we sent it back to the editor to check our edits because Again. and, and mm. she, we were like we've done quite a little bit more <laughs> yeah we had to pay a little more money it. we're gonna pay more yeah. yeah yeah because that's the process like we were paying a professional editor and then what happened there was a bit of a delay something so then we kind of we thought should we go back in again and we thought mm. no 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 we're too close to it because mm. that's what happens you get attached to their words you, they're your babies you've created them and you mm. just you can't see objectively and then somehow it all dovetailed and we got a proofreader yes um, who's actually my first editor so he knows my style he knows sarah's style mm. very well known uh editor and proofreader mm. and just great with non-fiction books then it went for proof reading yeah and that was another month yes yeah then we still 
No, 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 wait. We're going squonk. We did not. We tap set it first. We, we got the order wrong. Okay, yeah, we had a tap okay. set, right. So tap set for those of you that don't Which know because it's the time. technicality. This is literally how the book looks. It's the layout. It's all the, can you see all the parts, Headings the chapters? And... The, it's what the book presents like, which is mm. a huge part of the readability. Mm. Yes. And that process, we went backwards and forwards for, I don't know, how long? <laughs> Two months. Yeah. A large part of the reader experience is how have you broken the book up? What does the font look like? How big or small is, is the pay, are the pages? Are there diagrams or illustrations? So and that's we, your next stage, mm, really. And yeah. we pushed back quite a lot because we're both a little cheeky and we're both, we know what we want. So we were quite involved in that process. When it came back, we we're like, yes, like that, don't like that. Mm. She gave us two options, actually, and we had to choose font mm. um, and blocks and something. Yeah. And then we still had to go through it, and then it went to the proofreader. And then it's the proofreader. Right. So now, from our splash, we've written a book in five days. We are nine months down the line, yep. and we hadn't got a signed of book yep. in our hands. But we've spent a lot of money already. We've so spent that's a lot of money. Thing, because we have published this under our name of Quickship Publishing. Mm -hmm. um, our because, own little publishing company. Yep, that we've because been... we want full rights. We wanted to own mm. the full rights to it. So we had thought about a publisher. We went, we kind of mulled that, we went down that road and we thought, actually, no, we need to own this and yeah, we right. want to do more with it. And that, what you can do when you have a brand. So yeah. we, we own this lock, stock and barrel. And then right. even after the proofread, again, we're in separate countries and it's different time zones. Yeah. So, you know, you know what it's like working with people across the world. And then we did another kind of two proofread. So yeah. Sarah was said, okay, I'm going to go proofread the document, would save it. Yeah. And then I would go in and proofread it. But again, like, you can still miss stuff. So I looked yeah. at a final copy. I thought, oh my God, is that a spelling mistake? Mm. Because it happens. And I'll never forget with my first book. My best friend says to me, have you found the mistake? And I'm like, well, you can't have the book because I've only just got it. What do you mean have I found the mistake? She says, every book has a mistake. Mm. And that's where we say done is better than done perfect. It's better than perfect. And even now, when we got the book in our hands, part, half of me was insanely excited i did a little happy dance i grabbed it i screamed but the other part of my brain was saying oh the type sets a bit of <laughs> color treatments a bit dark oh the alignments a bit high so there's many levels of what happens in this process yes because exactly because the cover was then designed we had to send the cover of we get a proof of the cover when we've chosen the printer and the first one wasn't perfect we got another one and actually the first one was better than the second one mm. And that's the thing. I was coming to South Africa for our launch, and we decided you've got to choose your battles. Mm. So if we go, we could have said, okay, well, we're not, you know, we've got to go back another layer. And we just thought, well, we can't. We've hired a PR person. I'm coming. We then have to go, we're doing it. Done is better. We can fix it on the next round, which yeah. is what we keep telling you. So I think mm. Mm. what I wanted to say today is that when we tell you things, ask you things, demand things of you, we're also doing it. Mm. Like I'm holding myself to that. So. I've had to learn this is not heart surgery. So it does not have to be like millimeter by millimeter perfect. It just actually has to be put your heart, wear it on your sleeve, put it out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's the critical thing, you know, the agonizing over any stage of this process is going to just hold you back. And I think that's so critical is just what a long journey it really is. Um, often writers say, I'm going to write a second book and a third book. This is my first book. And it's fabulous. If that happens for you, that is so lovely. But because it's so long and so expensive and so draining and so such an investment of many things, try and make this book. If there is one thing you have, it's a one standalone mm -hmm. product. Mm -hmm. I'm holding my, actually, it's Your first book. My, this is my first book, hilariously enough. I picked up the wrong book. <laughs> but... Um, and, you know, it doesn't matter how many little mistakes are in this, and I'm sure there will be little typos or typesetting errors. The excitement is that our message is out there. We're going to stand up in front of all our fabulous people and see them and talk to them, and, yeah, that's yep. exciting. It is exciting. Mm. Um, you were saying about uh, just getting it out there, and that made me think of something. Yes, yeah, so all too often it's we say, like, get your first baby delivered. Mm. Because once you finish the first draft, the addiction, like, Oh, I can write another one. Mm. And then number one sits there. So I've just gone, so this actually in terms of book is number four and I've just written number five, right. which is why we, uh, we got confused. Mm. But what I've done was I wrote first draft, but actually that is now completely set aside and I'm putting all my energy into this until this is out <clears> in the world because <throat> we've still got to get the digital copy up. We've still got to get the print on demand copy up. We've still got to put all those links up. Those aren't there, so it's not done yet. And then the first goal is always to sell the first mm. thousand copies. 
that's like the first milestone and then it can start mm. climbing so we've said we need to sell our first thousand copies and that's the challenge it's also the delight it's also the Absolutely. Stuff that makes you tired. <laughs> so we say write a book in a hundred days. You're gonna get a year to get it in your paws and you're gonna spend the next three years promoting it. And that's the long game mm -hmm. of being an author. And if you're lucky, you'll spend the next twenty-five years promoting the same book. Because there are authors out there and those best selling authors, and I think I spoke about on the bestseller list, year after year, twenty years on the line, is Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. And he's, he's written in various iterations, very, for children, for parents, for teenagers, whatever. But that book, he is still doing talks. Mm -hmm. He is still promoting that book. It is perennial. It is on the shelves. It is on every shelf in a bookshop, in anywhere in the world. Not every shelf, your finance shelf, your mm -hmm. money shelf. Along with... What's interesting is, um, it's, I don't know if many of you know Brendan Bouchard. He's a big brand um, and expert leader in America. Brendan Bouchard, great for nonfiction writers. Um, and Paolo Coelho contacted him to launch his last book, the title of which has eluded me. And he said, ah, ah Brandon, ah, why, I don't know why people are not buying my books. Oh, that's a bad accent. Anyway, mm. and what Brandon said is people think you're dead. They think you are an old man and you are dead. And people don't know that you are still actually in the world delivering your material. So we need to bring you into the modern world. We need to show that you are alive and mm. visible and a person which is using modern media and social media. Um, and because mm. what happens is then the moment you do that, all your back copies, your back books start mm. selling again. I'll mm. never forget when my second book was launched and suddenly I started selling more of my first book because mm. mm. it's just other people want a little bit of everything. Mm. So, so <laughs> you're all mostly on the first stage of this journey, but the next stages will come. They really will. And that's why our mantra is. Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. Because if you're going to be perfect, chances are five years on the line, you're still going to be on stuck in one of those. Maybe it's the cover approval where it's just not exact or the layout and it's just not perfect. Do you know, because it's always these little anecdotes. So literally we're currently in uh, Heart Bay mm -hmm. and I was waiting for Sarah and I bumped into someone that I haven't seen for five years. Mm -hmm. And we had 20 minutes to just natter literally on the outside of a coffee shop. And she says to me, I've got my cards. My cards are ready, but I've been sitting on them. I haven't done that final, but the I just want to... Card. What cards they, are they? Well, they're cards for yoga for children. But she's like, I just want to do one final edit. She said, but I've done so many. I've been sitting on them for years. I've got 50 people waiting. They're wanting these cards. And I said, she said, yes, I want to do this. And I want to tweak that. And I want to edit. I said, no, it's not about that. I said, what's the fear? And then she stopped. I was like, what's the fear that's stopping you? from putting it out there because that's the bit that will trip you up because we can mm. always do another edit mm. and we had this whole conversation around that and I said you've got 50 people waiting I said you're now messing with your reputation mm. and then I just got bigger because that's the mm. truth it's like I just said just set a deadline and get it out there and you can improve it on the second one so sometimes mm. we do just have to let go of any of the stories mm. 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 and exactly that um, and then that's the, you know, that's the road as an author. You've just got to march down and just keep going. I think that's where it's so hard. But anybody who's choosing to write a book and choosing to share their life on some level or write a novel, is you really putting yourself out there? It's a brave journey because it's far easier not to write anything. It's far easier to comment on other people's posts. Mm -hmm. um, but when you really are the person who's generating the content, you are the groundbreaker. It is challenging. It's mm -hmm. confrontational. People can definitely tear you down, especially when you have your own face on the cover of the book, Kate. So I'm worried about that. <laughs> so, um, you know, you, you're opening yourself up. You're making yourself vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also the beauty of being in the creative realm, being an author, being a writer, being anybody who works with literature or poetry or art, because that's, what touches people and what we know happens is you know that that dream is always tapping on your shoulder or tapping on your heart or nudging your brain going but you want to write that book mm. you know you want to put it out there and then the fear comes in and the fear gets the better of you but the calling is always there and it always it's a longing and like or we mm. say, often say the yearning to write and you've always mm. got to dance between I don't know if I can and who am I to and I don't know if I know enough and I can't write properly versus the oh but come on like your soul almost demands it of you and you've got to dance between those two and let your soul and your spirit pull you through and let the ego kind of you know settle on the side and just go for it and do it
yeah, no, I'm looking at this cover. So I'm more worried that we just like the color is wrong. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And it's just doesn't have matter. to love the book. And let it go. <laughs> love the message. Love the message. And with that, we're going to love you all and leave you and keep writing and keep pushing on and keep putting your voice out into the world. Bravo. Bravo.